Hello everyone. Uh, in this problem we are trying to calculate the power for a specific portion of the circuit that is considered the load and the source that is connected to the circuit is a sinusoidal um, signal. It's a voltage source with uh, 150 cosine 250 T as the value of the source, voltage source. Now we're going to use uh, uh, calculation in phasor domain to calculate the complex power and we know once we do that and we calculate S the complex power the uh, real portion of that uh, it would be the average power and uh, the imaginary part would be the reactive power. So let's uh, before we can calculate that basically we need to take uh, the voltage calculate the voltage across the load and then uh, multiply that by the current <coughs> that is passing through the load and both of these are in phasor domain in other words the voltage and the current they're both uh, complex numbers so before we can actually do that we have to calculate the voltage and the current and in order to do that we will first transfer our circuit in to the phasor domain so that's our source um, this is the equivalent of the capacitor, equivalent of the resistor, equivalent of the inductor, and we're still dealing with this portion being our load. Now, uh, in order to calculate these values, we use the equations for the impedance. So, Zc is equal to 1 over C omega j. So, now the uh, capacitance is uh, 80 10 to the minus 6 the frequency or the angular frequency is 250 times 250 and J so 8 times 25 is uh, uh, 200 so that's 200 uh, times 100, that's uh, 2 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 6, that's 1 over 2 10 to the power of minus 2 J, which is the same as minus uh, 50 J. So the value here is minus 50 J. For the inductor, ZL is equal to L omega J. Uh, that's 100 10 to the minus 3 uh, times 250 times J. So that's uh, 25 10 to the 3. So that's times 10 to the minus 3. That's 25 J. So that goes right here. That's 25 J. <coughs> and then finally, the value for the resistance doesn't change, so that's 50 ohm. Now, in order to transfer the source, we take the magnitude and then e to the power of j phase, which is 0, so 150 is the value that we need to use for that portion. Okay. Uh, now that we have the circuit in... Uh, the phasor domain, we can start a circuit analysis. So we identify the nodes. That would be my ground. This is 150. Um, this voltage right here, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, let's call it V1. And the current everywhere is I1, I1, and I1. Now, uh, we can uh, simply just write the equations for all the components and uh, do the math. But this is a very simple circuit. Uh, first of all, to calculate the current, all you really need to do is to take this voltage and divide it by all these three uh, impedances in series. If you write the equation for components, you're going to get the same result. And then to calculate V1, you simply have to do a voltage divider between this, these two, uh, and that multiplied by the voltage that is applied to all 
all of them in series. So I'm just going to quickly do that as opposed to writing all the equations. Um, so for current I1, it's the voltage 150 divided by all these three in series to each other. So that would be 50 plus 25J minus 50J. So that would be 50 minus 25J. We can uh, divide both top and bottom by 25 first. And that would be 6 divided by 2 minus J. Um, and then multiply both top and the bottom by 2 plus J. So that would be 6 times 2 plus J over 2 minus J, 2 plus J. That's uh, 4 plus 1. So 6, 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 divided by 5 is 1.2 times 2 plus J. In other words, um, 2.4 plus 1.2 J. So that takes care of calculating the current in the circuit. Now for the voltage, as we mentioned, this is a simple voltage divider. So V1 would be 150 times these two which is 50 plus 25J over all three in series, which again would be 50 plus 25J minus 25J, which would be 50 minus 25J. So we can simply, simply uh, divide both top and bottom by 25 first. So that would be 150 times uh, 2 plus J over 2 minus J. And then uh, multiply both top, bottom, uh, both top and bottom by 2 plus j. So that would be 150 times 2 plus j times 2 plus j divided by 2 minus j times 2 plus j, which would be 4 plus 1, which is 5. Sorry, 5. So this would be 30 times. Now this is 2 times 2 is 4. J times J is minus 1. So that would be 3 uh, plus uh, now uh, 2J and that's 4J. So this is now 90 plus 120J. So that's voltage across and we calculated the current. So now we can go back and calculate S, which is basically one half uh, the voltage, which is 90 plus 12J times conjugate of the current. So that's the current which is 2.4 minus 1.2 J. Sorry, this is 120 J, not 12 J. So you calculate that and it turns out to be 100 80 uh, plus 90J. Um, so the average power at that point, this is your average power. P. And this is your reactive power, which is Q. In other words, this is the, the amount of power that is being consumed by the resistor. Uh, it's a real power that is being consumed and this is the amount of power that is actually uh, conserved uh, by the inductor um, in the form of a magnetic field. <clears throat> now you can actually calculate the, the power in other ways. Uh, we actually use this equation 
the original equation that says the uh, complex power is one half uh, voltage, uh, phasor of voltage times uh, conjugate phasor of current, but uh, we also introduced other equations. Uh, for example, one would have been one half the impedance uh, times the magnitude of current to the power of two. And since we already calculated the current, we could have used that, and then the impedance is also there. So uh, let me show you how you could have done that, as opposed to using it this way. So S, you can also calculate by saying one half. Now impedance is 50 plus 25J, 50 plus 25J. And now you have to calculate the uh, magnitude of the current. And I think the magnitude of current, if I'm not mistaken, is it's basically this value to the power of 2 plus this value to the power of 2, um, square root of that, and then to the power of 2, the square root goes away. So it's times 2.4 uh, to the power of 2 plus 1.2 to the power of 2. And if you do that, this calculation, uh, I think this turns out to be 7.2, and then you get exactly the same result. Okay, uh, with that, we conclude our calculation. Uh, hope uh, this has been helpful. Thank you.